Hey guys, Stripter here. Today I've got a video for you about why Fortnite will never leave beta. If I had to bet right here, right now, today, one year from now, Fortnite is still in beta and trying to avoid going to 1.0 as hard as possible. This is not a Fortnite hate video, it's not a PUBG is better, or COD is better, or anything like that, but more of a surprising back-end thing that Fortnite has been doing with their beta that helps them be the game, the giant juggernaut of a game that they are right now. Hopefully I sound really good in this video, I'm recording it from a hotel room, in California. I've actually got a new travel microphone. I've got a whole wall of pillows set up behind the microphone so that it's not supposed to echo too much. But this will be my last topical video before the whole flood of E3 stuff starts. Because I'm here in California to go to E3, to go to EA Play, to go to all these press conferences and events and play games early. And while I've been here at EA Play, which is the first event, I went to their Game Changers University. I've been talking to industry people and developers. And when you talk to these people, you also get to hear their take on things. What is bad Field, think about Fortnite. What does Call of Duty think about Fortnite? Right now, Fortnite is the biggest thing on the planet when it comes to gaming, and it's pretty much swallowing the entire industry, especially the shooter sub-industry of gaming. So every developer has an opinion, and one of the most interesting things that I've learned while I'm here is that Fortnite has a secret weapon that no other game is properly utilizing at the moment. It completely flew under my radar, and I think everybody else's radar from corporate right down to customer, and that secret weapon is base. Beta. beta means an unfinished product, right? Beta is early access or, you know, early access alpha. Beta is not the same as a full 1.0 game. Well, for PlayStation 4 and for Xbox One, beta also means less strict certification standards. And these lax standards are why Fortnite can pump out updates so quickly. It's no secret that right now, Fortnite is probably the most frequently updated game on the market when it comes to its overall content, weapons, cosmetics, etc. The map gets updated every week or so. There are frequent patches, both for balancing and for bugs. And Epic Games has been doing community requests, just taking ideas off of Reddit or from community contests and just putting them into the game right now. And when I go around to these events and I talk to developers, of course I have to ask them about what they think about Fortnite, how are they going to beat Fortnite, blah blah blah. And the two things that I hear over and over from more traditional developer companies like Activision, Ubisoft, EA or something like that is they're not afraid of Fortnite from the standpoint that it's a popular game and that lots of people play it because fads come and go, Battle Royale came and it will eventually go. They're afraid of Fortnite because it can do crossplay very well, which is something no other game is doing. And the biggest thing they're afraid of is patch speed and flexibility. These devs have almost no idea how Epic Games is managing to roll out so many patches, so many content updates, so many balancing updates, and being as nimble and as flexible with their community as they are. It's very impressive and rare in the gaming space. But one of those secrets is the fact that Fortnite is in beta. A normal game has to pass a lengthy certification process, which is usually called going gold or gold standard before launch. For a comparison, Call of Duty or Battlefield will submit their applications to go gold sometime in September. That's why when you put in your game disk, you're going to download like a one gigabyte update because the gold version that they submitted in September is stable and it works and it plays, but they'll have new patches, updates, and stuff, and you'll update it on day one. A normal game also has a minimum one to two week lag time for updates or patches. In some cases, they have to pay for those updates and patches as well, to the tune of millions of dollars, because it all runs on servers that aren't theirs, and Sony and Microsoft have to certify these patches in the same way that they have to certify the game. They will submit a patch for, say, Call of Duty, and Microsoft will get this patch, and they'll analyze it, and they'll run it over God only knows how many test cases, and then they'll test it for stability, and then they'll test it on the different systems they run. And if it passes, then they'll send it back to Activision and say Activision can deploy it on blah 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 day. This is something like a two-week process, and it's kind of an expensive and slow process. The time and cost is one of the reasons why you see more and more games doing hotfixes instead of full patches, and why full patches come every couple of months at best. However, since gaming consoles are a lot more advanced than they used to be, and betas are very, very common on gaming consoles, not just like the true like beta tests, but you know, marketing betas, pre-alphas, early access, consoles are increasingly going toward the Steam PC model. 
The process is a lot less strict on betas. A beta is an unfinished game, it's expected to be unstable, it's expected that the developer of a beta might release a patch that can totally crash the game and they'll need to update it to get it back up functioning again and that they're going to be testing out a lot of things. A lot of times betas are kind of indie games too. So the certification process for console alphas and betas are much, much less strict than a full release game. There are less test cases to run through, there's less time involved, there's less money involved in the patching, there's uh, less strict tests for that matter. So if you have a beta game on console, you can update it very, very frequently for a fraction of the cost as a full game. Which is why when you boot up Fortnite on your PlayStation or Xbox, or even on PC, because it all has to be homogenous, right? It's got this big old beta, Fortnite beta, Battle Royale beta stapled all over it. But let's be honest, is Fortnite really a beta? No, it's, it's a super huge and popular game. It's a very well optimized game. It's a stable game. It, it can run cross play. It runs better than most games at full launch now, even though it's still technically in beta. I don't think it'll ever leave beta because if Epic Games took Fortnite out of beta, what would happen is that they would have to decrease their amount of patches and the amount of patches that they do would be more costly to them and the certification process would be longer and they would be less flexible with their community. It would pretty much gut the back end of the game and one of the biggest advantages that they currently have over other developer studios. So even though you could build some marketing hype around a 1.0 release or you know like Fortnite finally lives leaves beta, I don't think it's a good business decision for them. And I don't think Fortnite will ever leave beta. I think a year from now, maybe even several years from now, they'll still technically be in beta to take advantage of the lax certification program and the frequent updates because it's one of the best things they have going for them. They're going to stay in beta forever or perhaps as long as possible. The end result of this, however, I believe is going to cause one of two things. I believe that number one, consoles might change how they handle patches to give other developers more flexibility or faster test cases or less certification protocols or something. So while it definitely isn't Sony and Microsoft's favor to maintain a high quality of standard for their games, the other developers are going to get really, really salty if a clearly full release game like Fortnite can do their patches really fast, whereas other developers are punished for it. The old money is going to get involved, they're going to complain and lobby and something's going to change. Or, if Sony and Microsoft don't change their standards, I think you're going to see a ton more games launch in beta. I don't think you're going to be able to do that for the games that come on disc, like COD and Battlefield and one of some of the ones you're more familiar with on these channels. But I think that every game that can avoid being a full release will, and every game will try to be an early access alpha or a beta almost indefinitely to get advantage of the cheaper and easier patching. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something about it. I hope you enjoyed my Fortnite gameplay as well. This is going to be the last topical commentary before I move into stuff for E3. I've got EA Play coming up, which is going to be a Battlefield live stream, then two Battlefield videos. Then I'm going to the Call of Duty event, and there will be some capture opportunities there, but I believe I'm supposed to keep almost all of that private. I have a secondary fun Call of Duty thing to do, I've got a Bethesda thing to do, I've got several VR opportunities coming up. I've got a lot of fun stuff coming up at E3, so I hope that you enjoy the content that's coming out, and if you do enjoy it, man I'm tired this morning, I'm recording this like 5am. Uh, if you did enjoy, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.